this year in the beginning of that, what we would describe as the second term. Um, as you look at the, the problems or, or challenges in Galleon right now, I've grown to believe that the biggest challenge to our growth is a lack of housing. And so we're going to do a number of things uh, to promote tax incentives that council was uh, insightful enough to put in place a year, almost a year and a half ago, uh, pr push housing, uh, both in terms of the development of new housing. I really think that uh, when you look at the housing inventory, I look out at uh, Marilyn and Craig, and I think they are the, the realtors in town, almost literally, as a, but practically speaking, uh, we've talked about the need to have uh, some housing inventory out there uh, that allows people who want to move to Galleon uh, the opportunity to do that. People involved in HR like uh, Chanel uh, out at uh, Coverts, attracting people to this community, one of the big things is having housing that meets the needs of the kinds of young engineers and, and other skilled persons that they want to bring to town. So that you know, Coverts would just be one example of a business who would benefit if we had a little more substantial housing inventory. So that is something that uh, I think from the point of view of City Hall, really working through a list uh, somewhat strategically and really this year it's clear to us at the City Hall and other community leaders that we need to, to make gains in housing. Uh, I think that supports the growth at Avita and it's uh, clearly, uh, there's all kinds of anecdotes that you can get from schools and school teachers about those people who get jobs here and then wait a couple of years to find the right kind of housing to move here. So we need to address that. I think that's a, a big step overall in, in uh, moving uh, the, the population in advance of this upcoming census, moving the population, uh, trending back uh, in a positive way. Uh, two other more specific areas that we're gonna focus on this year. Uh, one is, is uh, building infrastructure to support the growing commercial activity that's going on in the 598 corridor. So there's going to be projects um, um, uh, let and built uh, out in the area of Keller Drive and uh, really think that with the right infrastructure <coughs> investment, you're gonna find that that, that area out there north of Brant Road uh, will really start to uh, gain momentum and growth will happen there. The third area is really going to take a little bit, thanks Joe, it's going to take a little bit more time to accomplish and that is the reconstruction and addition of a third lane uh, on five, uh, 598 or Portland Way, really from Arby's uh, out to around 30. So that project, uh, some important funding from ODOT, uh, we're going to pursue over the next several weeks and then line up uh, like you, you have to for the kinds of funds that would be involved in what, what is approximately a five to seven million dollar project. So um, I don't, we've not at City Hall wanted to slow down the development in the 598 corridor uh, by adding cost to individual projects, meaning uh, for the Bell stores, for instance, they would have to put in a third lane from point A to point B. Uh, we really are, have made a decision to tackle it more from a corridor uh, perspective than causing, I saw some friends from Firelands here, we didn't require them to put in a turn lane. And so that kind of logic as each project's come in, I think there's increasing concerns about safety and accessibility of new investment. So we're gonna tackle that uh, beginning this year on a more corridor approach. And I, I'm convinced that that's the best way to secure state funds and, and probably the only practical way that the uh, Galleon area can afford that kind of project. Very last thing, uh, for those people who are involved in travel and tourism, keep looking over here at Mike and it keeps hitting the travel and tourism bell like I'm getting you know, hit at a carnival thing. Um, uh, with the uh, sleep in and the success they've had in uh, this initial year and I expect them to have over the next several years, we're going to have an opportunity to generate some uh, transient tax, bed tax. And so I think it's important uh, rather than to have those funds build up in the city treasury uh, which is what's going on now, uh, to come up with some way uh, to have a travel and tourism effort. Uh, the very last thing I would say is, <clears throat> if you happen to be in Uptown Galleon last Saturday, I don't need a show of hands, uh, but if you were through there or up there, you, you noticed that there were 
dozens and dozens of people. I don't think there was someone counting like at a graders game, counting in attendance, but um, just dozens and dozens of people. And so what's going on in Uptown Galleon, I think is a trend. It's not an isolated business. And I think with the kind of support uh, that can come from a locally focused uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau, you can see the support for those uh, businesses that uh, look like retail businesses on one hand, but really are, are uh, uh, travel and tourism trip generators. And so we're going to begin to look at that. So um, supporting the development that's going on out there in that 598 corridor with infrastructure, I think that also includes what I describe as the southwest quadrant of, uh, of that intersection where you're going to see new ownership and, and a lot of things happening in the old uh, Pico property, excuse me, over the, over the course of this year, uh, doing s serious planning on the 598 corridor uh, and beginning to develop housing in this community in a way that hasn't happened in, um, you know, several decades. Uh, really the agenda is the agenda that the city is going to pursue and uh, hopefully enlist your support and make those those uh, goals reality so thanks a lot for listening and